Behind the Guitar is brought to you by the Martin Guitar Foundation, RCN, and by viewers like you. Thank you. From the campus of Steel Stacks in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, ladies and gentlemen, our host, Craig Thatcher. Welcome to Behind the Guitar. I'm your host, Craig Thatcher. Behind the Guitar is a musical performance series which focuses on the stories and memories of each artist. Tonight, we'll be joined by internationally known guitarist and performer G.E. Smith. G.E. is the former lead guitarist of Hall & Oates, musical director of both Saturday Night Live and the 30th anniversary concert for Bob Dylan, and is currently touring as part of the Roger Waters Band. Please join me and giving a warm welcome to Mr. G. E. Smith. All right. Okay. Thanks so much for coming here today, to G. E. Hey. Just hit one? Just take it away. All right. I reward for the valor on earth you don't roost too high for me well I went out last night I had to have a sack on my back thinking about those chickens how I'm gonna bring them back I crept up in the quality's yard but the hen house door was latched I had to bust up through the hen house floor grab a couple chickens came running on back and it's chicken chicken you can go up in a balloon chicken or oh chicken you could hide behind the moon chicken chicken you don't never let a foul bird be ten thousand dollar reward for the fowler on earth you don't roost too high for me well the police arrested me last friday night now he won't let me out it was down in the alley back of where I live I had a whole lot of chickens up in my house You could carry me to the penitentiary wall I'll serve out my time Just as soon as you put me on the l and -N track I'll have chickens on my mind And it's chicken, chicken You could go up in a balloon Chicken, no oh chicken You can hide behind the moon Chicken, oh chicken I don't never let a foul bird be The ten thousand dollar reward for the fowler on earth You don't roost too high for me Influences and how, how did you actually get started playing guitar? What was your... Uh, well, when I was real little, probably about four, uh, I went down in the basement with my mom. She was doing the laundry. There was something hanging up on the wall down there. I said, what's that? And she said, well, that's a guitar. It used to belong to your Uncle George. 
I said, well, can I have it? She said, yeah, it's been up there for a long time. It was all dusty and stuff, you know. And it was in the summer. I took it out back in the yard. And I laid it on the ground like that. And I watched that low string vibrate. And I just thought that was the coolest thing I ever saw. And that's probably all I did with it for the first couple of months. You know, it, it only had four strings on it. But somewhere along the way, um, and I don't remember how, I got more strings on the guitar. I got the guitar strung up and got a little book about how to, the Mel Bay book, mm -hmm. you know, that everybody sure. had back in those, back in the 50s. And I uh, started learning a couple chords and off and running. There you go. Yeah. So you played through, through high school, yeah, different sure. bands? Yeah, grade school, high school. And then you left the Stroudsburg area shortly after high school, or? Oh, uh, I was probably 19 when I finally really went away. And I went to Connecticut first. A Connecticut. Good, good friend of mine, a keyboard player named Gillette Durkee, who's a Stroudsburg guy, had come back from Vietnam and then was going to New Haven University on the oh, yeah. like GI Bill kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And he was in a band up there, and he called me up and said, our guitar player is sick, can you come up till he gets well and play? And I went up and just never, never came back. Never you know, came that back. was that, yeah. Wow. So how about we uh, do something together? Let's do a number. It's, here's a song from probably the 1840s, maybe. And um, it's called Buffalo Skinners. Uh, Bob Dylan learned this from Woody Guthrie, and I learned it from Bob. And Woody apparently learned it in the late 20s, 30s, from an 80-some-year-old cowboy. So, cowboy to Woody to Bob to me, it's a pretty direct line. I'm happy about I just about learned this one. it today. So and Craig go. just learned it, so. Well, come on, you fine young cowboys. Listen to my song Please do not grow weary I'll not detain you long Concerning some wild cowboys Who did agree to go Spend the summer pleasantly On the trail of the buffalo It was in the town of Griffin in the year of 73 when this well-known famous drover he comes stepping up to me he said how you do young cowboy he said how you like to go spend the summer pleasantly on the trail of the buffalo me being out of work right then to this drover I did say who's going out on the buffalo range well that depends upon your pay but if you'll give good wages transportation to and fro then I might go with you on the trail of the buffalo he said, yes, I'll give good wages. I'll give you transportation, too. If you'll agree to work for me until the season's through. But if you do get homesick and you try to run away, you'll starve to death on the Buffalo Range and you'll also lose your pay. With all this flattering talking, he raised up quite a train. Some 10 or 12 in number, some able bodied men. Our trip it was a pleasant one as we hit the western road till we reached Old Boggy Creek in the hills of New Mexico. It was there our trouble ended and our trouble had begun. A lightning storm hit us and it made the cattle run. 
I got all full of prickers from the cactus that did grow. Outlaws waiting to pick us off on the trail of the buffalo. Well, our bread, it was corn dodger. The meat you could not char. The ponies that we rode upon, there was the worst you ever saw. Cattle blankets for sleeping, as the ground froze below. Terrible hard farings on the trail of the buffalo. Well, the working season ended. But the drover would not pay. He said, You're drunk of all your wages. He said, You're all in debt to me. But the cowboys never had heard such a thing as a bankrupt law. So we left that drover's bones to bleach on the trail of the buffalo. Yeah, the working season ended. But the drover would not pay. He said, You drunk up all your wages. He said, You're all in debt to me. Cowboys never had heard such a thing as a bankrupt law. So we left that drover's bones to bleach on the trail of the buffalo. So you're in Connecticut, yep. you're playing with your friend's band in Connecticut. How do you transition from there uh, to Hall & Oates? Uh, yeah, I'm up in Connecticut and I was there for a good part of the 70s and uh, playing with a band up there um, called the Scratch Band that was a pretty popular band up in New England in the 70s and we played a lot. I have a couple of calendars where we would do like 240 dates a year and stuff which is a lot for a bar band. But the great thing about a bar band gig is you learn songs, okay. you know, so I learned hundreds and hundreds of songs and that really helped me, uh, help my playing, you know, you gotta sound like the record, you know, and you learn how to do all different kind of people's styles. So that, that was really good. But uh, Dan Hartman, who had been oh, in the yeah. Edgar Winter group. He wrote Free Ride. Remember, come on and take a free ride. Dan Another Pennsylvania guy. Another Harrisburg. Yeah. Pennsylvania guy. Dan lived in another part of Connecticut, and he saw the Scratch Man play at a club. And he had just put out a solo record, and it had a, a song on it that was a big worldwide hit. It was a disco song mm -hmm. called Instant Replay. Pretty corny little number, <laughs> but huge all over the world, you know? And he needed some weird-looking people to take to Europe with him and mime the thing, you know, on TV shows. So I fit right in. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and then we actually kind of played a little. So I was playing with Dan. And I had also played with a band called Desmond Child and Rouge oh, that had some records yeah. out back then. Sure. Desmond eventually became a very uh, successful songwriter. Yeah. You know, wrote a lot of songs, wrote songs with Aerosmith and all kinds of people. Um, the drummer in Desmond Child and Rouge had at one time played with Hall and Oates. That's how I wound up being with Daryl and John. So from Hall and Oates, uh, was Saturday Night Live the next thing or was Bob Dylan next? Back in uh, 78 and 79, Gilda Radner did a one woman show on Broadway. She had been on Saturday Night Live since 75 and had gotten well known. So she had her own show on Broadway. The girls from Desmond Child and Rouge, Rouge, the three girls, were the singers in the Gilda show. Oh. So they said, come and audition for the band on the Gilda show. So I did, and I got the job there. Then I wound up getting married to Gilda. And, um, so now, through that, then I meet all the Saturday Night Live people. Because mm -hmm. they're coming around, and we're going over to 
Saturday Night Live, and I get to know Lauren. Howard Shore, who was the original mu musical director on the show, we became great friends. And um, so that's how I wound up on Saturday Night Live. I just remember all the great guitars you used to play. Every time you tuned in, there was another vintage instrument being yeah, played. Yeah, sure. Uh, I'm doing Saturday Night Live. I came on in 1985. In 1988, in the spring, I get a call from a guy named Elliot Roberts, who manages Neil Young and Joni Mitchell. And at that time, he was managing Bob Dylan. And I knew Elliot. He had actually been my manager for a minute in 1980. So yeah, you know, all two minutes. Um, he calls me and he says, can you get a, a bass player and a drummer and be at this rehearsal studio in, in Manhattan uh, tomorrow night at 10 o'clock? He said, Bob Dylan's in town and he wants to do some playing. I said, sure. So I'm excited, you know, this is, this is really cool. But it wasn't put up to me like it was an audition or uh. that Bob wanted to do anything. He just wanted to play. Mm -hmm. So we go, me and T-Bone Wolk, my yeah. great friend who's gone, but not forgotten. And uh, uh, Chris Parker, the drummer who was working with us on Saturday Night Live at the time. We go over there and we're there at, you know, quarter to 10, man, we're ready. We're on stage, we're tuned up, we're ready to roll. Nothing, and there's nobody there. It's dark like this, like from where me and Craig are sitting right now, we can't see the back of the studio. We right. can't see past that camera right there. And it's like that. And we're there and we just stand there and then time goes on and time gets to be about 10.30. Here comes somebody out of the back in the darkness. Mm. The guy with the hoodie and the gloves with the fingers cut out. And it's Bob. He comes walking up and, hey, how you doing? You know, okay, okay, hello. You know, he puts on the guitar, and we start to play, and he's playing, you know, and we're doing some songs, and we're trying to fill in it. It's okay, it's good, you know, but it's not the magic, you know. And I'm starting to feel not so great, and I'm looking <laughs> at T-Bone like, oh, this is weird. What's going on here? So at some point, he turns around, and he says, you guys know uh, a song called Pretty peggy -O? And me and T-Bone in unison go, sure. And he goes, you do? And we go, yeah, yeah, we do. So we played it, and we did know it, and we played it, and it was real good, and we played for hours. He just then got all animated and excited, and we, he just go in one song after the next. He knows more songs than mm -hmm. anybody. Paul Schaefer knows a lot of songs. <laughs> Bob knows more than yeah. anybody, and knows the lyrics, and knows five different versions. So anyway, we, we played until late, late in the night, and, and thank you very much. And we went home, and the next day, Elliot calls me at the office, Elliot Robinson. He says, okay, you got the job. I said, what? <laughs> he said, well, that was the audition. I said, you didn't tell me it was an audition, man, you know, which I'm glad he didn't. I'd have been really nervous. <laughs> it was bad enough. So that's how I got the job with Bob. Now we're going to talk about your sound and what you look for in a guitar. And to help us out with that is... Our good friend, internationally renowned guitar expert, Mr. Dick Boke. Well, hi there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the guitar that GE was playing was <clears throat> a 217, a 2-17. Conversely, this is a, a, dr a dreadnought guitar, a full-size uh, dreadnought, a uh, big guitar with a big booming bass response and a lot of power and volume for playing on stage. Um, GE certainly, a, as a guitar player, um, uh, chooses guitars much like an artist would choose paintbrushes, uh, different size paintbrushes for different effects. And uh, uh, small guitars tend to have a bright, crisp, brilliant treble response, and big guitars tend to have a, a powerful driving bass response. Um, tools of the trade tools of the songwriter, tools of fantastic prof professional musicians like GE. GE, before yeah. we get into what you're doing currently, I, I must ask you about uh, the Bob Dylan anniversary concert with Tom Petty and George Harrison and Donnie Harrison and all the players that were on board. Yeah, that must have been just a thrill. Well, I'd been playing with Bob for four years, since the mystery audition night. 
And we had toured all over the world, you know, a few times. And every place we went, any of these well-known people, whether it was a Beatle or a, you know, David Gilmore or whoever it was, they came to the show. Because that's Bob, you know, and they respect him. And, they, and people would come and say hello. Um, got to play with, you know, Neil Young sat in with us a couple of times, uh, George Harrison, Ringo sat in with us, you know. Uh, great, so when it came time to do this tribute show, it was celebrating 30 years on Columbia Records. Everybody that we called was like, yes, mm -hmm. yes, I'm there. No, no, not a problem, you know, from Johnny Cash to, um, to Roseanne Cash, you know, they were there, all of them, and on absolute best behavior, it was amazing, you know, there was a lot of artists on the show, we had two days of rehearsal, and everybody I would talk to, I, I was setting up, like, what time was sound check, you know, what time should you show up at the garden to do this, Madison Square Garden, do the sound check, you know, Eric Clapton saying, give my time to Tom if he needs the time, you know, Tom saying, give my time to George if he needs the time. They're, everybody was just so cool. And um, because it was my job, you know, I just had to kind of not think about it <laughs> and do it. But when the show was over, I was down in the, in the little, where the cars come to get you, and I'm about to get in the car, and, and Neil Young came over to me. And I knew Neil a little, you know, from around. But he came over and, and said, man, that was great. You know, you did a good job, and it felt so good. And then I went, oh, what did I just do? You know? So, one yeah, of those it was moments. amazing. Why don't you play us one more song? All right, one more. Uh, yeah, this is a song I really like. And from the first time I heard this song, I used to think about Bethlehem. And I used to think about these old steel mills and stuff out here. I do for lack of honest work. My family is lost to me. They couldn't bear the hurt to see the things that boys become for lack of honest work. I hold no blame for anyone. Was I who did arrange? To pay my union dues so I'd not have to think or change. And when I was replaced was I who started down the hill and drank away my savings till I couldn't stop myself. Prophets of a brave new world, captains of industry, have visions grand and fine designs, none have room for me. They see a world where everyone is rich and smart and young, but if I live to see such things, too late for me they come. I'm not afraid to bend my back. I'm not afraid of dirt. But how I feel the things I do for lack of honest work.
I know I'm not the only one Men ground beneath the wheel Such company does not assuage The loneliness I feel So many are designed to be Society's debris But I would be remembered For the life life took from me I'm not afraid to bend my back I'm not afraid of dirt But how I fear the things I do For lack of honest work Yeah, how I fear the things I do For lack of honest work Smith, ladies and gentlemen, what a rare and intimate setting and opportunity for us all. So well, I want to thank GE. I want to thank you all for coming out and joining us. I'm Craig Thatcher for Behind the Guitar, and we'll see you on another edition real soon. All Thanks right. a lot. Thank you. <laughs>